Hello again. Welcome back to the podcast. Here we talk about things that have to do with grace and what grace fully means. The word is tossed around so much and yet so many seem to be experiencing it. And so for me, as I journey through life, I really want this concept of grace to really become a reality in not just my life, but in your, your life as well. So I'd been talking over the last few podcasts about the idea of a spiritual director. And for some um, in the Protestant um, religion, um, there has not been much experience with it, especially if you've been in more of the non-denominational church segment. And so um, over the next several podcast sessions, I would love to invite you to think about this concept of spiritual direction, why it would be important for you to seek spiritual direction, and also why it is um, valuable to have someone journey along that road with you. So let's talk about the idea of why someone would need spiritual direction. Sometimes it's difficult to listen to God's call and obey. And so we may need help in the form of disciplines and practices. Discipline in the spiritual life focuses on the practical side of spiritual formation and is the active companion of belief. Belief, giving your heart over to God's existence and activity, Proceed spiritual practice and formation, but belief will be deepened and strengthened by the regular use of spiritual practices. A spiritual discipline or practice is a way of creating some open and free space in which God can move and speak. For example, the discipline of solitude helps us spend time with God alone and so become aware of the divine silence. The discipline of community helps us to let God speak to us through others. Both solitude and community are disciplines of prayer because in both we try to listen to God. All the disciplines of the spiritual life are intended to help us to move from an absurd or deaf life to an obedient listening life of freedom joy, and peace. What is the role of a spiritual director? A marble, a block of marble cannot carve itself. It needs a sculptor. These are words coming from a book by Henry Nouwen called The Role of Spiritual Direction. An athlete needs a personal trainer or coach. Likewise, a person of faith will certainly benefit from a spiritual director. We are all very susceptible to self-deception and are not always able to detect our own fearful games or or blind spots. How do we know that we are not deluding ourselves, that we are not selecting words of scripture that best fit our passions? or that we are not listening to the voice of our own imagination. Who can judge their own heart? Who can determine if their feelings and insights are leading them in the right direction? It is too easy to make our heart's desires and our mind's speculations into the will of God. We need someone who helps us to distinguish between the voice of God and all the other voices coming from our own confusion or from dark powers far beyond our control. We need someone who encourages us when we are tempted to give it all up or to forget it all or to just walk away in despair. We need someone who cautions us when we move too harshly in unclear directions or hurry proudly toward a nebulous goal. We need someone who can suggest to us when to read and when to be silent, which words to reflect on, and what to do when silence creates much fear and little peace. Through the discipline of spiritual direction, we capture 
and explore in the presence of another wise companion or two. God's claim upon our lives, which has been and what may be now. We recognize God's activity and again say yes to the direction in which the Spirit calls us. The direction might be fearful or even quite radical, but we might also be surprised to see that the call of God is a call that is very attractive and that we are able to respond to it because we are being drawn by a loving force. A spiritual director is someone you ask to hold you accountable for exercising the disciplines and practices of the spiritual life. Spiritual direction, the ancient practice and provision for receiving such needed help, okay. offers prayerful presence, wise counsel, and careful guidance by a spiritual friend who is sensitive to the movements of the spirit and familiar with the disciplines of the traditions. Now, when it comes to spiritual direction, let's talk about what spiritual direction is not. It is not counseling. It really is more like friendship. A spiritual director in this strict sense is not a counselor, a therapist, or an analyst, but a mature fellow Christian to whom we choose to be accountable for living our spiritual life and from whom we can expect prayerful support in our constant struggle to discern God's activity. These are the words from a book called Spiritual Direction by Henry Nouwen. And I know that in my life I have experienced this, um, and it has made such an impact. Many times, hearing other people's journeys with how they walk through life really does guide how you view life because you do see first of all you're not all alone and secondly that especially if their lives pattern very differently from yours that there really are many ways to look at a situation I love the words that Henry Nouwen uses he calls it having a soul friend or a spiritual friend whom you can trust that will offer you guidance and wisdom or just lend you an ear. And the way we relate to each other in this type of spiritual direction um, relationship depends very much on the needs we have at the present and also our personality and external circumstances. Some people do this bi-weekly, some do it monthly. For for me personally, I am in a, a trio of friends and we actually talk every day and it began as something that was just sharing our lives but we soon realized that it became very synchronistic and really we were able to see nothing short of miracles answers guidance just in the midst of sharing what was going on in our lives in very open and intimate ways Here's some final words about spiritual direction. Spiritual direction, therapy, psychological counseling often appear to be one and the same thing. We are very familiar with words such as conscience, unconscious, depression, regression, frustration, defense mechanisms, dysfunction, addiction, and codependency. Psychological terminology is used more frequently in our society than spiritual words such as atonement, resurrection, sin, forgiveness, grace. However, if you simply remain in the psychological world, if you raise only psychological questions, you will get only psychological answers when your heart needs spiritual wisdom. Thanks so much for stopping by.